Axis Cavity Preparation Maxillary Molars Hello and welcome to another session of Axis Cavity Preparation. This video is about a patient who had a deep restoration done a week ago on his upper back right tooth. When he came to my clinic with severe pain in that tooth, it was an indication that the tooth restoration may have failed. On clinical examination, I observed an appropriately placed composite restoration with no high points, which was a clear sign that the problem was deeper. A radiograph showed a deep restoration encroaching pulp in his upper right first molar. Before we move on, let's discuss the anatomy of the tooth. With an average length of 21.3 mm, the pulp chamber of the maxillary first molar is the largest among all the teeth in the arch. It has four pulp horns, namely mesiobuccal, distobuccal, mesiopalatal and distopalatal. The cross section of the tooth shows that the horns are arranged in a rhomboidal fashion. As the walls converge, the floor becomes triangular, eliminating the lingual wall. Keeping this anatomy in mind, I began the axis opening after injecting local anesthesia. I removed the enamel and the previously placed restorative material with an endo-axis birth 3 in the central fossa, angling it towards the palatal root. After this, I continued to go deeper and simultaneously enlarged the cavity to feel the drop. Using an endo-z burr, I de-roofed and refined the walls by diverging them to create a positive seat for the temporary filling and copious irrigation. Making the axis cavity triangular with rounded margins helped me gain a direct access to the orifices after which I irrigated the cavity with sodium hypochlorite and saline to remove the debris. Anatomical dark lines called developmental grooves connect the three orifices at three angles on the floor the palatal orifice being the largest and first to be located. The mesiobuccal pulp horn was present under the mesiobuccal cusp. This elongated buccopalatally with a depression at the palatal end. Consequently, I located a fourth canal, MB2, after probing the tip of the DG16 explorer in a mesiobuccoapical inclination. It was 2 to 3 mm palatal to the mesiobuccal canal in the direction of an imaginary line connecting it to the palatal canal. The shape of the axis cavity was now transformed into a shamrock or clover leaf preparation. Lastly, the distobuccal orifice was present slightly distal and palatal to the mesiobuccal orifice. Nalapati provided the possible areas where we can locate the MB2 canal orifice. It can be present on the developmental line connecting mesiobuccal and palatal canal, mesial to the developmental line connecting mesiobuccal and palatal canal, on a groove on the palatal wall of the mesiobuccal canal, splits off the mesiobuccal canal in the middle third, Splits off the mesiobuccal canal in the apical third. Comes off the buccal wall of the palatal canal. Let's move on to the anomalies associated with the first molars. These include the presence of a single root with a single canal. Two distal canals. Two palatal roots or three mesiobuccal canals. Have you wondered why sometimes patients with sinusitis also complain of pain in a non-carious upper molar? As the maxillary first molar lies close to the maxillary sinus, the fundus of the alveolar socket may protrude into the sinus, producing a bony prominence in the sinus floor. In such cases, the periodontal ligament and mucoperiosteal lining separate the root from the sinus. This is one of the reasons why maxillary sinusitis can cause pain in the maxillary molar region. Now let's continue with the maxillary second molars. The pulp chamber is similar to the first molar, except that it is narrow mesiodistally. The floor is an obtuse triangle, 
since the mesiobuccal and distal canals are much closer. The three canals might often appear in a straight line. As we know, the second molar has a total of three roots grouped close to each other, which may be fused to form a single conical root. When the buccal roots fuse to form a single buccal root, it may have two root canals. The axis opening for a second molar is the same as the first molar. The various anomalies include the presence of a single root with a single canal, incidences of pulp stones in the pulp chamber, rare cases of five roots with five canals, and the presence of three mesiobuccal canals. The maxillary third molar is seldom indicated for endodontic treatment. The anatomy is similar to the second molar, with three canal orifices and three well-developed roots close to each other. The roots can be straight, curved, dilacerated or fully or partially developed. The axis opening is like the previously discussed molars and so are the anomalies. Pop quiz. Let's recap. Maxillary first molar. Largest pulp chamber in the arch with four pulp horns. Three roots with a total of three canals. Axis opening is triangular with rounded corners. If a fourth canal is present, then the shape is rhomboidal. Maxillary second molar. Similar to the maxillary first molar, but a little narrower mesiodistally. Two roots close to each other, and three canals. Axis opening is triangular. Maxillary third molar, similar to both the other maxillary molars in having three roots. Canals vary from one to four to five in number, depending on the root. Axis cavity is triangular. In our next session, I will discuss another interesting case about mandibular molars, we hope you had fun learning with us.